Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Irfan Aiman bin Ahmad Suhaimi. This is introduction part. Before the independence of Malaya, the non-Malay leaders asked for automatic citizenship for all people that born within the federation, and with that, they will enjoy many valuable advantage in the land. In return, the Malay leaders and non-Malay leaders agreed to include traditional element inside the constitution, and among them is. Article 153 that deal with the reservation of quota for public service, scholarship in education, and permit for business and trade for the Malays and the native of Sabah and Sarawak. In this presentation, me and my friend will examine critically the implementation of reservation of quota in respect of public service, scholarship in education, and permit for business and trade for the Malays and the native of Sabah and Sarawak and providing also the relevant provision. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Irfan Aiman bin Ahmad Suhaimi. This is... Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before I start, my name is Muhammad Amdan Hazmi bin Jemad. And now let's uh, move on to the reservation of quotas in respect of services. For that, we look uh, into Article 132 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution, which defines uh, public services to include the armed force, the judicial and legal service, the general public service of the Federation, the police force, the joint federal state public service, the public service of each state, and the education service. And now uh, we look to Article 136 of the Federal Constitution, which states that all person, whatever race, in the same grade in their service of federation shall, subject to the terms and condition of their employment, be treated impartially. Which means that uh, every public servant, regardless of their race, shall be treated equally. However, uh, when we look into Article 153, this seems to contradict uh, Article 136, which say that every public servant shall be treated equally. As stated earlier, uh, Article 153 seems to contradict Article 136. This is because uh, under Clause 2 of Article 153, it states that notwithstanding anything in this constitution, but subject to provisions of Article 40 and of this article, the young Deputuan Agung shall exercise his functions under this constitution and further law in such manner as may be necessary to safeguard the special position of the Malays and natives of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak and to ensure the reservation for Malays and natives of the any of the state of Sabah and Sarawak of such proportion as he may deem reasonable of positions in the public service and of scholarships, exhibition and other similar educational or training privileges or special facilities given or accorded by the federal government and when any permit or license for the operation of any trade or business is required by federal law, then subject to provisions of that law and this article of such permits and licenses. This uh, may seem that uh, it contradicts that uh, Article 136, which states that uh, every public servant shall be treated impartially. Now, we can see from the implementation of Article 153, which uh, we discussed earlier, seems to be um, biased so at the Bumi Putra and we can see the implementation of this article by reviewing st statistics of employment based on race in public services in Malaysia. In this context, the, pr the principle uh, affirmative action policies included racial, racial preference in public service hiring, also known as uh, the quota system. Now, uh, the most obvious uh, effects of uh, the quota system is the significant fall in number of non Bumiputra officials following the NEP implementation. According to the SPA or Suranjaya <coughs> Penjawat Awam uh, or Public Services Commission, there were 29.7% Chinese public servants in 1980, which fell down, <coughs> which fell down to 8.2% in 2003, while Indians fell from 9.8% in 1980 to 5.2% in 2003. Uh, this uh, we can infer maybe uh, 
the effect of implementation of Article 153, which uh, specifically provide reservations uh, in public service for Bumiputra. Now moving to the NEP or New Economic Policy 1970, which is a form of uh, an implementation of Article 153. Now the NEP was announced in 1970 as part of a series of actions enacted in the aftermath of the May 19, uh, 1969 political crisis and it aimed to eradicate poverty and restructure society to, abol to abolish the association of race with the economic function in order to foster national unity or uh, commonly known as uh, the affirmative action policy. Now the NEP has been identified mostly with restructuring, that is measures to decrease inter-ethnic economic imbalances with um, between Bumiputra and non Bumiputra. And this is uh, what I've stated earlier, is that uh, the, pol the affirmative action policy, which uh, strive to uh, decrease the ethnic in the inter-ethnic economic imbalances between Bumi Putra and non Bumi Putra, particularly uh, ethnic Malays and Chinese. And as a result of the restructuring, uh, has come to be associated with positive discrimination or affirmative action on part of uh, the Bumi Putras, such as uh, such government restructures have resulted in much more Bumi Putra worth ownership um, business participation, uh, external opportunities, and public sector employment and promotion. And it has also been argued that uh, the government's natural incl inclinations, particularly following the NEP, uh, was to fill positions of public services specifically uh, with Malays wh wherever possible. Now, this uh, leaves us with an important question, which is, does Article 153 deny the opportunities of other ethnicities in public services specifically? <clears throat> now, does Article 153 deny the opportunity and interest of other ethnicities, especially in public service? Uh, the answer to this question is that uh, can be found uh, in five of the 12 clauses of Article 153, which seeks to limit uh, the scope of its applicability. Now, uh, these clauses, which is uh, the five out of, out of the 12 clauses uh, under Article 153, uh, say that the, constitu the constitutional provisions pertaining to a special position should not deprive or restrict other communities' legitimate interests in continuing to enjoy the same public offices rights, grants, facilities, or privileges that might reasonably be expected in the ordinary course of events. Now, it can be clearly uh, stated here, and it is safe to say that Article 153 never denied the opportunities and interests of other ethnicities, especially in public services. Uh, Article 153 deals with the issue of quotas for scholarship and other education educational facilities for training advantages, places in federal public service, and the awarding of permits of licenses for the operation of any trade or enterprise to Malays and Sabah and Sarawak natives. Statistics for the quota are not set, but are left to the discretion of the young Deputy Agong as he deems fair. And it is provided under uh, Clause 1 of the article, which entrusts the young Deputy Agong with the obligation of defending and uh, of defending the legitimate interests of other groups, which mean other groups other than uh, the Malays and natives of Sabah and Sarawak, in the same breath as safeguarding the particular position of the Malays and indigenous people in Sabah and Sarawak. Therefore, it is not uh, it is never uh, denying the interests and opportunities of uh, the other ethnicities. Now, does special position of Bumi Putra or Malays and native Sabah and Sarawak contradicts Article 136, which states that uh, every public servant, regardless of their race, 
shall be treated impartially or equally. Now, how can they be treated impartially if the Malays and uh, the natives of Sabah and Sarawak were given uh, special privileges uh, as uh, can be seen under Article 153, which is they have been uh, reserved their positions in public services, for example. Now, it does not mean that Article 136 is not exercised, nor does it mean that impartial treatment is only for Bumipu Trust. However, Article 136 must be read with Article 153, which allows for reserves and quotas in favour of Malays and Sabah and Sarawak locals. Tun Sufian has commented on this issue uh, and uh, has proposed that the two articles must be read harmoniously. And Article 153 allows uh, reservation at the entry point once in service, the equality requirement uh, in Article 136 should be applied uh, to promotions, incentives, and so on throughout uh, the whole public servants regardless of their race. Therefore, it cannot be said that uh, special, special positions of Bumiputra uh, contradicts Article 136. However, Article 153, which is the special position of Bumiputra, uh, makes proactive policy in order to balance the economy and the social disparities for the well-being of Malaysians at all levels of society. What, uh, what is significant and must be given serious consideration is the mechanism of implementing policies under Article 153, and the governance must be revised to guarantee that no Malaysian is denied legal protection or access to basic essential, and in this regard, the federal constitution assigns specific responsibility to Yang Chan Agong and establish its mechanism to protect the distinctive position of Malays and Sabah and Sarawak indigenous, as well as the legitimate interests of other communities. And as stated earlier, uh, Article 153 of the Federal Constitution makes proactive policy and executive action legitimate in order to balance the economy and reduce social disparities for the well-being of Malaysians at all levels of societies. And Article 153 uh, must be read to protect the legitimate interests of other communities as well. And Article 153 governs how policies enacted under it are to be regulated and administered. And in, and in addition, the federal constitution has further provisions to protect Malaysians against injustice and oppressions. Uh, for example, let's say Article uh, 8 of the Federal Constitution, which uh, Article 8 of uh, the Federal Constitution, for example, which basically uh, mentions that all persons are equal before the law and entitled to the equal protection of the law. We move to see the implementation of reservation of quota in respect of permit for business and trade. First, government have made an initiative such as the policy to target the equity ownership to the Bumiputra. Uh, the original national economic policy, the target is 30% equity ownership, consists of two sub target in which first 7.4% for individual ownership of equity for Bumiputra and second, 22.6% equity ownership for the group entity that representing the interests of the Bumi Putra, such as Majlis Aman Harayat and SEDC. In early uh, 1980s, this policy has been successful because Bumi Putra equity ownership has increased. At the end of 1990, the result is further from the target in which the target for individual ownership is just 7.4% but at the end uh, booming putra ownership individual ownership specifically has reached 14.2% while for the group ownership 
just 5.1%. Uh, since 2010, the individual and group ownership has been uh, increased and in 2015, at 11th Malaysian plan, we moved to see the implementation of reservation of quota in respect of permit for business and trade. First, next, the privileges of Bumiputra in doing business and trade in Malaysia. During the 10th Malaysian plan under Bumiputra agenda, this includes the setting up of Majlis Tindakan Agenda Bumiputra, MTAB, chaired by the Prime Minister Unit Neraju Agenda Bumiputra, Teraju. The government of Malaysia focus on strengthening entrepreneurship and for example, a total of more than 400,000 entrepreneurs in micro and small business benefited from loan provided by Amanah Ikhtiar Malaysia and Tabung Ekonomi Kumpulan Usaha Niaga Tekun and the total of loan is RM8.6 billion. Other than that, in addressing the need for business space, Majlis Amanah Rakyat Mara, Perbadanan Usahawan Nasional Berhad, PUNBN Yayasan Wakaf Malaysia, have built or have purchased more than 450 business space, particularly in the strategic location to help Bumi Putra. In addition, the Bumi Putra entrepreneur will also be given business opportunities and financing under Syarikat Bumi Putra Berprestasi Tinggi Trust Program. And for this program, more than 900 high potential Bumi Putra companies has qualified from merit procedure. This special fund was created in collaboration with SME Bank, RHB Islamic Bank, Malaysian Industrial Development Finance Berhad, Agrobank, and MTDC. And the amount of expense next the privileges of Bumi Putra in doing business and trade in Malaysia. During the 10th Malaysian plan under Bumi Putra agenda, the other privileges of Bumi Putra in doing business and trade in Malaysia we could see from 11th Malaysian plan from 2016 until 2020. Under Bumi Putra development agenda, the government focus on increasing ownership of corporate equity and non-financial asset as well as expanding entrepreneurship and business opportunities. For that, Bumi Putra Commercial Property Revolving Fund has been established to assist entrepreneurs to acquire commercial properties. This initiative will enable Bumi Putra entrepreneurs to shift from renting uh, the space in business to owning property in doing their business in order to encourage the private sector and industry participation the government has provided non-financial incentive to contribute to Bumi Putra entrepreneurship development. This incentive include among others tax relief, double deduction. This initiative will enable Bumi Putra entrepreneur to penetrate the market through business openings and employment opportunities provided by the private sector. The quota for the Bumi Putra in government project procurement in line with Bumi Putra agenda during 11 Nation Plan, the government has set up policy on participation of Bumi Putra company in MRT project. For Kajang Line, the target was at least 43% of Bumi Putra company to be given the contract. As 30 September 2016, 42 out of 85 work for the Kajang Line has been awarded to Bumi Putra contractor with total value of RM 10.5 billion ringgit. This amounted to 15% of all the total contract value of Kajang Line. For the Putrajaya Line, the target is 45%. And at 30 September 2016, the total of RM 11.8 billion worth of contract has been awarded to Bumi Putra contractor. And this amounted to 47% of total value of work. Bismillah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Arif Wajdi bin Nur Azam with matrix number 218061. And I will presenting about the reservation of quota for education in respect of scholarship and admission to university. Now, I will discuss about the article 153 of the Malaysian Constitution. 
In this article, the YDPA yang di Pertuan Agong is responsible for safeguarding the special privileges granted to Malay under this article. This privilege, which include public service, business and education, are based on the special position of Malays and native of any of the states of Sabah and Sarawak and the legitimate interests of other communities. In this part, I will focus on education, specifically scholarship and admission to public university. Prime Minister Tun Razak highlighted that this privilege would become a part of Malaysia's culture and the nationhood when he presented the 1957 Constitution Amendment B. However, this special right which are guaranteed by the Constitution were a major cause of contention bills for both Malays and non-Malays. While Malays thought it was, it was in, uh, insufficient, non-Malays saw it as a discriminatory policy. This dissatisfaction with the special lighting policy in 1969 increased tension between the country's major ethnic group, which ultimately resulted in racial writing, the suspension of parliament and the proclamation of national emergency. Next, it is about the new economic policy, or we call it NEP. The Malaysian constitution provides the basis for the social contract among the various races in Malaysia with special privilege given to Malays. The new economic policy, or we call it an EP, it was designed to create a more equitable society by eradicating poverty and restructuring society so that economic function is no longer associated with race. One of the main thrusts of the NEP was to promote social equity through education with the implementation of an ethnic quota system for student admission to public higher education institution. In order to promote social mobility, the new economic policy was launched in 1971 after the aftermath of the racial riots of 1969. Higher education opportunities for Malay students were increased through the use of ethnic quotas in admission policy and providing scholarship and loans for them to study both at local and foreign university. The NEP accelerated the process of granting access and equity to Malaysian students, specifically those from the Bumiputra category. The national education policy has encouraged more Bumiputras to pursue higher education through establishment of indigenous, indigenous People's Trust Council. In Malay, we call it MARA, college matriculation programs and the provision of universities scholarship exclusively for Bumiputras. While the new economic policy has brought some significant social restructuring, it, is, it has also extended the dimension of this card. Unexpectedly, class division appear to be sharper, making the problem of national unity more critical than before the NEP. And as for the issue for this part, it is just an equitable distribution of scholarship to young Malaysian and admission to public university. Thus, which way should be implemented, whether by quota system or meritocracy system? Now, I will discuss about the quota system. What is the main purpose of the quota system and what is it? The quota system is designed to ensure that each ethnic group is given a fair chance to add a, obtaining scholarship and admission to university based on their racial composition. This is supposed to address the excessive demand for seats by any of any one of group, any one group, and allow each ethnic group a fair chance to obtaining it. Since the riot of 1969, the new economic policy was designed to create a more equitable society by helping to reduce poverty and changing the way society is organized so that people are not dependent on their income based on their race. The quota system that provides a high percentage of education for Malays in public university has made them feel has, it has made them feel entitled and the consequences it it reducing their motivation to compete with other races. This has been evident in 2001 when the education ministry reported that 7,000 place, places in local universities reserved for women putras under special quotas were unfilled. Thus, the recent finding that a large number of Malaysia's graduates are not suitable for the jobs av available has sparked an argument that the government should practice a meritocracy 
instead of positive discrimination in favor of Malays. In addition, it is well known that a large number of Malaysian public university graduates lack the skill needed for the many of the jobs. It will discouraging it will discourage foreign investment in Malaysia. The inequality of opportunity in the education system based on the use of quotas is important because it creates and maintains the socio-economic status of the upper strata of Bumiputra society and does not promote the social mobility of the poor uh, of the poor Bumiputra as it used to be. Now, this is about the meritocracy system, which is the second system. So, the meritocracy system is a, we call it as the rule of merit, is a system in which people are rewarded based on their individual achievement. This allows everyone who has the potential to be successful to have an equal chance, regardless of their social class, job position, or income. Meritocracy is usually based on hard work and talent, but it can also be based on qualities like intelligence or good judgment. Meritocracy is a term used to describe a system where people are chosen based on their abilities rather than their background or other factors. While meritocracy has its, bene its benefits, it can have its own problem because it can overlook important factors. This can be unfair because it ignores the advantages and disadvantages that people have based on their social class and other factors. A meritocracy in higher education would enable students to compete for positions and benefits, but some privileges or advantages must be given to a certain group until they have they are at the same level as others. This is necessary in order to implement meritocracy as it is not fair to have the one group of people with more advantages than others. Now in this part, I will tell about the action taken by the government, which is the ethnic-based affirmative action policy. All right. So, there is a significant policy advantage to awarding scholarship to students from poor families. But in order to achieve this goal, affirmative action policies should be designed in a way that benefits all students equally. To date, the ethnic-based affirmative action policy has a significant advantage for students from poorer families. But this advantage is no longer justified given the large gap in standard between students from Bumiputra's and non-Bumiputra's families. The government has the government used a quota system from 1970 to 2002 to help ensure that more Bumiputra students were enrolled in university. However, this system caused inequality among students as Bumiputra students were overrepresented and non Bumiputra students were underrepresented. So, in 2003, the government changed to a system of meritocracy. This system rewards students based on their academic results and their co curriculum rather than their race. The government should make sure that the Public Service Commission are more representative so that the merit system can be trusted. It is suggested that the government allow some public tertiary institution to be open to all students rather than just specific ethnic group. This way, the government can set up a clear and transparent criteria for admission that take into account social economy and geographical background as well as region regional disadvantages. Regarding scholarship, the government should introduce or expand the provision of scholarship for academic excellence for the top 5% of applicants or enrollees in selected fields assessed as critical to Malaysia's social, cultural, and economic needs. All explicit or implicit quotas in the recruitment and promotion of faculty should be put an end as it is ridiculous to entrust the higher education of a young. Are we young to any but the most qualified? In fact, consideration should be given to the establishment of special department of NGC to look after non bumiputra ethnic minority affairs and especially to provide oversight in the fair and unbiased implementation of government, government programs which such an NGC should be brought 
based and include representative from government interest group, ethnic minority communities and NGOs. As for conclusion, as a whole conclusion for this presentation, I will conclude that affirmative action in Malaysia, in affirmative action in Malaysia has had a positive impact on social economy development, as it has helped to integrate and empower minority groups while also promoting economic growth. This has helped to maintain national unity and stability. So that's only presentation from us i will say thank you for listening until the end and thank you thank you again and i apologize for all of our mistakes this only from us thank you again okay.